Hey there, welcome to my little two car garage in this Porsche 911 restoration project. Today is kind of a big day. I'm gonna be pulling the engine out. And even though that seems like a backward step, in my view, it's not. I was anticipating pulling the engine out because it's typical with custom work, like the custom motor mounts and the 912 engine on a 915 transaxle. Everything on my to-do list requires the engine to come out. And that includes the shift linkage and the clutch and all the engine tin and so forth. So this was part of the plan. Hope it goes well. In fact, right now it's uh, 12.02 and we'll see how big of a deal it is to remove the engine. I think I can do it with the lift, of course, in less than an hour. Of course, I gotta clean a little space. All this stuff has to get out of here. Just put it outside. Okay, that should be enough room to slide the engine out. Um, hopefully, this doesn't get in the way. Let's lift it up. One thing I always remember to do is to unplug my garage door opener. That just means that if the door opens, it won't hit the car. The door can't open if it's unplugged. That's why I do that. Okay, underneath here, there's really only a few things I need to disconnect. This clutch cable is incompatible, so this is easy to remove. Um, from that side, and then I have to disconnect the throttle linkage. That should be easy. The emergency brake cables and the brake lines, all that stuff can remain. The transaxle should just clear all that stuff. The ground cable was never attached. Still got a little work to do on that. The oil lines are also just hanging here. They've already been disconnected because they're too short to connect to the filter here. None of the electrical stuff has been connected to the engine yet. So really simple process of getting this out. And there it is, totally out. Camera's in the way.
there's the engine bay right there. And there's the engine. Just rolled it over here to the spot where the 356 normally is. And it went pretty well. I had to, you know, make sure I cleared this without bending the tunnel, which um, was okay. And I did forget to take this ball off right here. So as I was pulling it out, this ball kind of prevented it from going back. It's the throttle linkage. I don't know how I forgot that. I just put it on. But everything is out and use the floor jack to kind of wheel it around. So let's check the clock. It's now almost 1245. Okay, 45 minutes isn't that bad, although it really isn't a fair engine drop because this car was not a running car. There's no fuel lines to disconnect. There's no electrical to disconnect. There's no seals around the engine and all that. So that was about as easy as it could get. And I think it was worth it to take it out. You know, I would have spent way more than 45 minutes racking my brain, getting everything perfect to only install it once. That I think is unrealistic. So my approach is to iterate just do a little bit at a time and then eventually it should go in for the second time and hopefully the final time. Uh, it's highly likely that it'll have an oil leak or something that might need to be taken care of, which would be another uh, engine drop. But fingers crossed, one more time. One of the things I wanna accomplish with the engine out of the car is to put the clutch in it. So I don't know if I'm missing any internal components in here. So I'm gonna pull this apart and uh, check to see what I need to do for the clutch because that probably means ordering some components. I do have a 915 clutch and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to adapt it to the 912 engine. Okay, at least on this transaxle, the, the release arm is present. Um, it's totally indexed wrong here on this arm. These two are out of sync because I couldn't see when I put this arm on, but that's on a spline. That's easy, easy to, to remedy. I think I'll check the parts diagram, but I think I have everything here. Just need to make sure my throw out bearing and everything's going to work on this, on this sleeve. And this right here is the stock 912 flywheel and it uses a push style clutch. And that's what the 356 used. This is pretty much a 356 engine but it's a little different shape than the 356 flywheel, but it's the same principle. And then this is the 915 transaxle and it uses a pole style clutch. So these two are not compatible. And I decided to change out the flywheel for something in this white box. So this is an aftermarket component from KEP. And this is a billet steel flywheel adapter. So that's going to go right to the 356 engine. Uh, all the dowel pins and so forth are here. This has been balanced. You can see it's got some holes drilled in it. It's been balanced and this is going to accept the 915 style clutch onto the 912 engine. So I did invest some money in this. This is a $250 part, but in my opinion, it's well worth it because this allows me to drive my car before I even get a 911 engine and I will recoup the costs even on selling this part in the future once the 912 engine sold. And it also gets me a premium for the engine because whoever buys this engine is going to be able to test drive it. Okay, here's the clutch that I have. This is a used part, but it's somewhat special. It's an aluminum clutch, which is a lighter weight, so less rotating mass. Uh, throw out bearing is used, but it feels really nice. I'm just going to use it as is. And the clutch surface is okay. It needs to be, I have a um, hone to kind of rehome, put a cross hatch in it, and should be good to go. So I'm just going to clean up the transaxle and see if it slides on. I'm just going to spray some metal conditioner on here and get all the rust off so we can get parts sliding on. I've decided to replace this arm with a later version. So that is in the mail. It should be here in a day or two. So I'm not even gonna put this one back on. So let's see if this will work. 
guess we open that up. Feels like the clutch fork, you know, these forks are going right into this groove and I can see them in there. So I think that's right. Okay, this disc is used and I have measured it. It is, I don't remember the numbers, but it has about 40% of its life left. I think it's like normally eight millimeters. It can go down to like 6.1 or something. And this is around uh, 6.8 or 6.7. I wasn't really sure, but it has a little bit of life left. So I'm gonna install this as long as it fits. And it does. Cool. So, so far, uh, so good. I think everything's compatible for a change. Just want to check the bolt pattern on this and make sure this is right. And that looks perfect. So the one thing I do need to get are the bolts that go here, 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 nine bolts that attach the clutch to the flywheel. So that'll clamp it all together. Just done a little more research and the good news is there's nothing missing on this clutch fork. This is, uh, it's supposed to float up and down a little bit. Some of that will get taken away when the shaft gets attached to the bottom because there is a, rub a rubber washer there. The bad news is this is an early style 915 transaxle that uses a kind of a funky guide tube. This guide tube is not removable and there's a seal inside. And in order to replace that seal, you have to completely take apart the transmission to replace it. So hopefully this one doesn't leak. I can't tell if it does or not. Um, it doesn't look like it did in the past or someone cleaned this up pretty well. So taking my chances a little bit on this transaxle, hopefully it will operate to some degree and my guess is in the future, I may be changing this to a later 915, a little bit more modern with different gear ratios and so forth. But for now, we're definitely gonna try and get this thing to run. Another item off the list.